So friends, in this part of the discussion, uh, we will be talking uh, more about the points that are related to the uh, text, you know, and, and performance uh, kind of uh, idea uh, that is presented already. And uh, I will request uh, Professor Bajaj to proceed further. Thank you, Professor Prakash. So, uh, here, uh, uh, viewers, I would like you to also look at some of the points, you know, of the dramatic text and the performance. So, uh, let us look at some of the key points that you can uh, keep in mind while looking, while trying to assess what a text and what a performance is. So, let us look at what is a dramatic text essentially. Now, a dramatic text is primarily therefore, uh, you know, meant to be performed and uh, the written text is secondary to performance as far as drama is concerned. It is not meant to be read in private as in poetry or prose, it is meant to be performed. Even when the playwright um, writes a text, then this playwright writes for it to be performed and keeps in mind the action that is at the center of this, uh, of a dramatic text. Now, drama is a, actually a result of the conflict arising from the action of characters, right. So, it must have a conflict and then drama could also be of uh, different kinds, you know, there could be an episodic sort of drama or there could be a climactic drama which is one that uh, builds to a climax and the other that actually has uh, different episodes put together. So, uh, whatever be the form, the conflict is uh, central to drama because the moment characters uh, uh, you know, come on stage and they talk and dialogue is, uh, ensues among them, dialogue is essentially uh, the viewpoint that this character uh, carries. And when this character carries this viewpoint on the stage and there is a kind of a dialogue that ensues among characters, then we notice that two or more points of views actually come together and um, they are, uh, you know, they are judged for their validity. So, the audience in that position is actually always judging the, posi judging the position of characters, assessing what they say, assessing their behavior on the basis of what they say and also assessing who is right and who is wrong. So, uh, these characters are therefore in, uh, in that sense points of views, where different points of views come on stage and they are... Uh, pitched against one another and the uh, audience is forced to choose one or another viewpoint and see its validity or assess its validity. So, therefore, conflict and debate uh, is essential to drama and what is also interesting in drama is that the uh, playwright uh, must always show uh, how things appear. The playwright may not in fact give us an overarching narrative and uh, may not govern our uh, viewpoint because we see characters talking directly to one another and sometimes talking directly to the audience or to themselves and in, in, in all these cases we are uh, face to face with the character. Now, uh, this character of course, as, a, as uh, I have discussed earlier, is also the actor who is performing a part. So, the, we are face to face with the actor and the character. Now, uh, it, it, because drama is a kind of a dynamic form and it keeps changing with different historical ages, you find that the actor who may be from the present era presenting a scene or a play from another time period also appropriates it according to one's own um, time period, uh, the value systems that are important in that time period and therefore may change the meaning of the text therein. So, uh, the dramatic text in that sense is, um, uh, you know, is, is, is very much uh, in, in that sense amorphous. It, it changes, it alters in the hands of the director and the actor. It is all, you know, uh, with the artistic assistant directors and therefore it is a more of a joint effort. Now, when we reach performance, when this text becomes performance, then we need to realize that within theater particularly, performance is a kind of a creative activity because there, because it is a process. Why I call it creative is, is because performance is essentially a process and in fact, character too is a role. Uh, and not necessarily a character. You know, you cannot take undertake this kind of a character analysis of a uh, character in theatre because this character is not fixed. 
because it is not the playwright's character because this character kept changing over a period of time as and when this play was performed or a particular play was performed. So, which character are you going to talk about? Uh, the character that was played out the first time or uh, probably after a couple of years. So, where is the character in, in drama, in theatre? You know, is there a particular kind of character that is fixed entity on the stage? And when uh, in academia, you know, when we are teaching and reading drama, then we seem to look at uh, the idea, okay, assess the character of a particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, like assess Lady Macbeth's character, for instance, or assess this particular character. Now, when you are assessing, then who are you assessing? Because essentially, theatre is a process and an ephemeral one, which is not uh, limited to that space and time. So, performance inevitably differs from every other performance that takes place. Actors continue to explore and interpret text as they perform and each performance therefore, the point that I am trying to make is that each performance is a version of the written text and there could be multiple versions of that text and there could be multiple characters who, uh, who have uh, emerged from that written text, which means there could be multiple role plays that are taking place. So, uh, in that sense, the performance is uh, has to be understood as a constantly, uh, you know, as, as, as an entity that is constantly shifting its base and constantly changing its meaning. The, because the director is of, uh, you know, often adding things uh, that the, pro, that the uh, playwright may have skipped and the character may also be adding things that the director could not see. So, this is, uh, you know, this is why performance is a kind of a practical activity where uh, one is creating an act and also it is very important in performance and this is, uh, I would like to pause here for a moment on this particular point that, uh, that performance is a, is a creative act but also an act in which the audience as also the actor needs to believe in that act. You know, and this is where, uh, you know, uh, the Stanislavski's theory around faith and a sense of truth comes, uh, becomes important because in this uh, book, Faith and a Sense of Truth, Stanislavski actually talks about how in acting it is important to create authenticity on stage. It is important to go uh, take as much time. You see, uh, what Stanislavski very interestingly, uh, you know, says, and this is one of the theatre exercises that um, often uh, students of theatre uh, take up, that is to uh, to be able to drink water from a bottle as you would drink water. Uh, now, uh, you it may be it might look simple, but if you don't have the bottle and if you don't have the water uh, going into your throat and you don't know how much to gulp, how much where to pause and how you would look while gulping down water without that water in uh, and without that bottle in hand. So, you know Stanislavski gives a, gives these couple of examples. For instance, uh, a famous example from this book is about burning, uh, you know, uh, the cash or burning money, you know, no now, if you do not have uh, the match box and the match stick and you do not have the note, how are you going to burn? You see, so there are steps involved. So, you know, the idea being that there has to be a sense of truth in what you are doing. You need to exactly know how much time will it take for you to count the notes. You need to know how much time will it take for you to uh, pick up the match stick. How much weight would it have? right how much weight would the stack of notes have and how would you burn them so you so the weight the time if you're carrying something heavy then you can't walk fast right so performance while the text doesn't really need to go into these uh, in, into this dynamic it could have been just simply that the character walked to walked out right and the playwright can just uh, you know, be done with that, the dramatist here on stage or the director and the actor needs to know how much time will it take for the actor to walk if he's, he or she is carrying some weight, right? Then how much force would it, uh, would it require from him? Now, one instance of course is to carry as much weight, but you know, for instance, uh, uh, Stanislavski also gives this example of carrying the knife, right? Now, you need to thrust that knife into the belly of 
uh, the character and he says that how would you do that you know this knife is not real you know this is made of wood but you have to put that much force and anger into it as if this was going to be the real knife that is going to kill the other person and the person who is being killed also needs to show as much pain right so now these are those subtle areas of performativity uh, which stanislavski brings to light that uh, that the unless you believe that you are carrying an actual knife unless you believe that this that you are holding a glass of water and you are trying to drink it unless you believe this is true the audience will not believe it right if you do it uh, without a sense of truth without authenticity then uh, the uh, audience will also know that this is all a sham right so there is these uh, points about performativity that um, you know they are very important as such a, a, when performance is concerned now um, another theorist richard uh, sheshner broadens the very scope of the word performance and he asserts that everyday life is actually a performance since it consists of restored behavior he says because we are a uh, restored behavior that is actually attained through routines and habits of life because we have been performing rituals because uh, you know because we have been trained in a manner where there is a behavior and we 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 repeat that behavior every day he says life is a performance because you are performing a part you are one person at home and you are another outside when you are walking on the street and a third when you are meeting friends and a fourth when you are working king in a job situation so everyday life is therefore according to richard sheshner kind of a performance now these the performances which are not really performances but can be seen as performances are uh, include rituals that we you know religious practices and rituals marriages and uh, which according to him is a is a performance because you know the role that a bride must play and the role that the groom must play and how the bride is supposed to walk and what do what so it's for him he says all these aspects of lives whether they are these rituals marriages funerals he says sports matches they are performances races in stadiums they are all performances so wrestling matches so uh, he says that these are actually performances of life Uh, and therefore life itself is a performance for him because we are constantly role playing in life and performing and you know this uh, you can also add the idea of gender performance which has become um, you know an important topic among feminists also that how gender is performed you know that it's a performative activity that one performs the part of a woman and therefore one is seen as a woman one performs the part of a man and therefore one is seen as man so there is a kind of performative angle in society and in life which is which cannot which according to these um, critics cannot be taken away from performance and why i find it interesting is uh, because i think once you uh, look at theater as not just a literary activity and once you put it in the light of other performances of life you know you going to office you going to uh, college or you going to study there is a kind of a performance in your life which when put parallelly when juxtaposed with a performance on stage will give another kind of meaning you know that you know that what is on stage is a performance but what i do in life is also a kind of performance so how is this performance any different from the other this also uh, brings literature very close to life you know we have this idea that uh, literature or uh, you know watching a play is almost like you know is a detox or is unwinding but what you see on the stage is no different from what you the part that you play in actual life so uh, uh, to to that extent it is as realistic as your own performances in life right so therefore uh, the very idea of performance once it gets broadened to include other areas of life once it is broadened to include your own uh, situational uh, habits then it uh, you know it becomes uh, a thing of life and not necessarily a kind of a uh, illusion or a kind of a literary artistic pure artistic entity then it comes very close to life as it is lived by individuals now let's for a brief moment speak of character and plot in drama right now when we speak of character in drama then character uh, you know is understood and is often defined as a kind of a mental and moral constitution right now 
as I said this character in drama also changes because dramatic characters are not fixed characters they are in fact roles which are uh, you know which which keep changing and yet these roles then or character roles are mental and moral constitutions now mental and moral constitutions that are uh, that 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 take their cue from the time period that they are a part of so uh, characters which are moral or mental constitutions also reflect a kind of an intellectual tendency of a period they also reflect the spiritual state of a particular time period and the information that a dramatic text gives us about a character is only a framework as i said it's a kind of a skeleton that needs to be worked on and fleshed out by the efforts of uh, the director and the actor who are working on it it uh, it it vanishes after that and yet this character seems to hold a kind of meaning for us right that meaning keeps changing it's a dynamic activity and yet that meaning uh, is uh, is f- is formed in that period when the audience tries to interpret that character that is already being interpreted by the uh, actor right so it 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 must suit the needs of a particular time and therefore character is also a state of mind and character is also a kind of a moral proclivity that could be associated of to that age to that historical period when we speak of plot for instance now plot in general is a kind of organization of events in a dramatic text right uh, and that have a sort of a causal link right now according to aristotle a uh, plot is more was more important than character and that one could do away with everything but plot had to be in place but modern plots are often episodic sometimes these plots uh, have characters who don't even undertake any kind of an action characters are situated within a series of events and you know that and these events are then logically uh, connected with uh, uh, one another right but there is an action which is at the center of plot right so plot needs to have an action and the character needs to be involved in that action but when you speak of action really then it is not necessary that this action is taking place in the physical space uh, particularly in contemporary drama that action um, uh, you know that uh, you know that action could be played out in the mind of the character as well the character exhibits one's uh, qualities and temperament you know through actions but these action the, but the scope of action within plot has also changed in drama today because uh, conflicts may be played out in the minds of characters and actions may not uh, be physically carried out through a change of scene for instance or any kind of movement on stage and that is in many ways uh, drama today in fact uh playwrights and uh, directors have gone on to uh, suggest uh, this kind of uh, you know this kind of claustrophobia for instance uh, through uh, lack of space for the character to not be able to move too much when the character doesn't move there is this kind of physical constraint and it in fact goes against the very idea of plot because nothing seems to be happening in the plot so as far as if a change of events are concerned and yet this kind of drama has emerged in the 20th century and you know has taken shape so a uh, plot uh, can be driven by internal changes in the characters minds today uh, that receive some sort of an outward expression and uh, go on to make this character kind of a complex character it is no more plot is no more just change of events and scenes and something happening on the stage which lead to a sort of a spectacle so uh, you see that uh, the human dramatic potential therefore is something that is uh, captured in the performative practices uh, whether it, you know there are there were these revolutionary dramas or um, guerrilla dramas or experimentation in performances that take place with audience participation alienation effects all these are ways in which the performative space is changing and performative practices are changing uh, with a particular end or a goal in mind right so uh, there uh, with a kind of a change this kind of a uh, appropriation that takes place but also the dramatic text in itself uh, changes over a period of time uh, as it moves in from one historical period to another so this is in nutshell about uh, you know the change from the text and uh, to performance and what are the different points of views to be kept in mind when we are looking at performative practices so this is how i would like to uh, look at uh, this text and performance 
uh, bit. But what is your take on uh, these performative practices that are experimented in, uh, you know, contemporary drama, particularly, you know, uh, the idea of uh, audience participation or, uh, you know, trying to show this kind of human potential. Do you think there is a human dramatic potential? <coughs> potential is a very big word because <coughs> there is a kind of exploration of life in art and the artist always wants to bring out the hidden aspects of reality. Uh, in drama it is much more possible that than perhaps in other art forms as you have rightly pointed out. But and that is exactly what I was saying that in drama because uh, these uh, contemporary theorists seem to see life as drama, life as performance. So, the human dramatic potential in a way cuts across drama and life. Uh, so, uh, because uh, here are characters who are uh, talking and trying to find a way out on the stage. So, when uh, for instance this critic Sheshna talks about performative space and says that life is everyday life is performance and when we speak of when we look at drama and we look at the human dramatic potential out there then can we extend it to life itself that there is human <laughs> dramatic potential in life. Definitely a potential is situated in life. And uh, the dramatist always has one's eye on on, on, on the uh, society of one's time. As you, and you rightly point out that drama is very historical in that sense, very contemporaneous. Uh, it uh, deals with problems, you know, that exist in life. And uh, pro problems are widespread uh, as well as deep uh, in their nature. And it's the job of the dramatist to, to bring out the, the, those depths from there. Also the reach <coughs> of drama I think and particularly a performance is greater than a text which may be singularly being interpreted by somebody in the house. You know you can productively, collectively interpret a text. So, the text may for instance be um, uh, a kind of a patriarchal text, but can we create newer meanings in that patriarchal text in a different time period such as today? Because it is possible in life, in, in patriarchy you can also work out, you know, the counter to patriarchy. So, so the same can be reflected as well as recreated in the dramatic text. Right. And, so, hmm. Yeah. And so, what I meant was that because drama is performative hmm. and it includes people, by its definition it requires people, it requires an audience, its reach is greater and therefore it has also become an agency, uh, you know, a, a, a vehicle of revolutionary drama. Uh, you know, a revolutionary drama has found drama to be the space and which is also why revolutionary drama uh, made it uh, audience oriented and moved out of the proscenium and moved on into the streets in order to spread a kind of a revolutionary message better. In fact, uh, in, the, in the medieval past and, uh, and before, uh, drama was folk drama and uh, it was a part of life, integral part of life starting from Greek, Greek drama itself. So, I think uh, uh, drama as, as, as a performance is now getting back to its original place and uh, it came from society, it is going back to society. But then with the intervention of cinema now, you know, because how dramatic texts are. So, when we look at from text to performance, then you see text was seen as static, but performance is fluid, right, and is ever changing. Now, the idea of performance is also not limited to theatre, for instance. The as I said, it has moved to life, but it has also moved to cinema, yeah, right. So, texts have been adapted and used for cinematic representations and there too, the reach of cinema again is wider and probably even bigger than drama. But um, uh, what I feel is that while theatre uh, has this quality of uh, you know being ephemeral and changing meaning in the moment, again uh, from the text that is the playwright's text to a performance which is again captured and caged in meaning uh, owing to the different mechanics that are there in cinema. So, it is almost like from one static medium to it moves to another. Would you agree with that? That in cinema, it is again imprisoning the meaning and making it fixed because it is a replay of the same uh, production and uh, it is not theatre. No, that is a complex question and uh, uh, art is now developing in different directions. Now, there are societies, you know, which, which uh, cannot afford to have uh, dramatists and stages and all those things. So, drama may reach those, those places. And uh, I believe that uh, drama is captured also through, through, through cinema and there are actors there and there, there is the entire paraphernalia of business, of ventures, of profit and loss and all those things. So, uh, both actually drama and uh, uh, cinema are, are packaged 
uh, you know, enterprises. So you package them, as, as you initially said in the discussion, uh, that you know, the, it is all organized, it is all funded, it is all, you know, uh, thought about and conceived. So uh, drama is going very close to theatre and, and uh, 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 to cinema and vice versa. And I believe cinema also can be reinterpreted in the mind of the audience and from place to place. The same cinema uh, may be explosive in one situation and very soothing in another. So they, they are very close companions with each other. Uh, I would definitely prefer uh, drama to, theater, uh, to, to cinema because as you have rightly pointed out, that uh, there are more attitudes and those attitudes in uh, drama than in cinema, more dynamic. So right. I would, I would so, that. from a written text to a dramatic text and a cinematic text. Mm -hmm. So, these are uh, dif the different so, areas. Uh, cinema is going seen. back, in fact, uh, slightly to towards the written text, mm -hmm. where it is frozen there. Right. That's what I meant. So, mm -hmm. from, from the frozen written text to another frozen interpretation. Mm -hmm. And the drama has the fluid space where it keeps changing. And the, and the forces in society are taking care, you know, that drama should not move out of its boots. So, so they control it, you know, from, from the angle. Uh, political angle, the social angle, the economic angle. Yeah, the economic angle is in fact very important in drama today because now drama is c um, created as musicals. Mm -hmm. You know, they are lyrical and musical and so the entertainment quotient is higher than their its intellectual uh, counterpart. So, mm -hmm. you know, they are, it's supposed to be musical drama or mm -hmm. lyrical drama and one which has song and dance and, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a packaged material of sorts which is not supposed to be revolutionary, in mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. and uh, more uh, entertaining yes. than drama. So, so friends, uh, we have uh, uh, today uh, a discussion which is open-ended. Uh, it, it says a lot about drama but it also uh, points out the problems that drama might face. Uh, I might have faced earlier and might face again. So uh, the whole thing is uh, again, you know, uh, uh, fluid in our context. And uh, uh, let's see how our drama unfolds itself uh, in, in, the, in other forms like cinema and, and uh, performances elsewhere. So it, it's, it's a question and discussion is uh, definitely taking us from life to literature and then back to, back, back to life. So uh, it, uh, I hope you have liked this uh, particular discussion. Uh, which is based uh, on drama as performance and drama and performance. Thank you.